All right, guys, today's build show, we're going to take a deep dive into wood studs versus steel studs. Now, if you've been in the business for any length of time, you realize that most residential job sites, most builds are made from wood. We've been using wood in America for a long time, and wood has a lot of benefits. Of course, one downside is uh, the wood's not always perfectly straight. But steel studs, if you're a commercial builder, this is your wall system. You know, you almost never see wood on commercial jobs. You see these roll formed, U shaped, ready to accept the drywall. Very different properties, very different materials. Let's take a bit of a deep dive on today's build show and the differences and why you might use one versus the other. Today's build show. Wood versus Steel Studs, sponsored by Prozigo. Let's get going. Okay, so let's start with steel. You know, commercial jobs, as I said, they almost never have wood construction. It's almost always steel construction. And there's a lot to like when it comes to steel. Standard sizes, in other words, just like, you know, typical lumber, you can get what we call pre-cuts made for your standard wall heights. They're always straight. There's no rot issues. There's no bow and warping. You're never pulling one off and siding down it to see if it's gonna be nice and straight for you. But one of the big reasons it's used in commercial construction is this right here, fireproof, right? I can run this torch on this steel stud all day long and it's not gonna catch fire. At some point it may get hot enough to melt, but it's not gonna be a source of fire. And that's one huge reason you see it in commercial construction all the time. Now wood, on the other hand, when we uh, frame houses, we do need to be a little bit particular when we're choosing our wood because wood has some downsides, like it's not always perfectly straight. Uh, it's certainly heavy. You can get splinters. Um, however, it is extremely easy to cut. It's also really easy to find. There's lumber yards all over the US that you can get these. Uh, it is structural. It's typically less expensive than steel studs. And of course, one of the big reasons I like it, it is God's material right here. It is renewable. Those trees grow incredibly quickly. Every 20 years, a well-managed forest is cut. We're able to get these rapidly renewing wood studs. And so I'm a huge fan of wood. And one big reason why you see this in residential construction, besides of course the history, is that it's structural. You can get structural steel, but most of the time when you see steel studs in commercial buildings, it's in a non-structural application where it's only holding drywall on one side or the other. But why are we not using steel studs more in residential construction? If you were to ask me, I think there's one big reason, and it kind of goes back to one of the big benefits we talked about. So check this out, line it up. One, two, three, four, five. Five seconds, and look how hot that steel gets. Of course, it's gonna get hot, right? Because we just heated it up. But look, as I run my FLIR camera back all the way to the back side of this stud, ooh, I can feel that. That's hot back there. Let's see if I can actually show you a value on the back side of that. It looks like it's gone up about I don't know, 15, maybe even 20 degrees in just five seconds of putting that on there. Now, of course, you know what's gonna happen to the wood if I do this, but let's, let's have some fun anyways. Five seconds on the wood. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, interesting, it's self-extinguished. I didn't even have to use my little uh, water bottle, so that's good. So you can see where the, where the fire was, it's still hot here, but now, you could, you of course know what's gonna happen. I touched the backside of that and nothing. It's totally fine back here. This one, I can still feel that heat on the backside of my hand. It's still pretty, I can touch it. It's under hundred degrees, but it's not far off. It's in the upper nineties here. Whereas this wood stud at the face, it's still hot. But back here where my hand is, I'm fine. I'm not, I'm not feeling that heat at all. Here's the deal, steel studs, highly conductive steel, right? We make wires from steel, we make frying pans from steel. It's meant to conduct heat. It conducts heat really well. 
Wood, on the other hand, does not conduct heat very well. We would never make a frying pan or try and run the electrical wiring in our house out of wood. In fact, wood has a pretty common rated R value of roughly one per inch, R1 per inch. So this two by four stud inside your stud wall is giving about an R4 for insulation value. This steel stud, if I can touch it, is still pretty hot. Almost zero, not quite zero, but almost zero because it's very conductive. I found a really great example of this online on the website, Building Enclosures Online. And Daniel Overbay has this great um, uh, illustration here, which says, look, if we used an R19 bat insulation, uh, it would be rated R19, but if we were to put that bat insulation inside a stud cavity with two by six metal studs on 16 inch on center, the actual effective R value of that wall would only be R7.1, so way less than half the rated value. Whereas that same bat insulation, R19 rated, if we put it in a two by six wood stud cavity, we're gonna have an effective R value of 16, which means that in residential construction, wood is a great choice. And if we're gonna use steel studs, we have to take a couple of other precautions. Let's go back to the studio and we're gonna break this down a little bit further. I'll see you back there. Okay, y'all, we did a mock-up to try and break this down a little bit further for you. So typical residential construction, two by four, often in the south. In fact, I built my house with two by four construction, usually some type of wood sheathing. I'm a big fan of zip system sheathing. Commercial construction though, we talked about this earlier in the video, you know, most commercial construction around North America is this steel studding on the exterior of the building. And it's not structural steel. Usually that building is held up by some type of platform uh, construction where you've got uh, reinforced concrete decks being held by steel. And then you'll see often on the outside of that, the sheathing is a uh, gypsum sheathing. It leads to a fire rating for a rated assembly. And then a great option for adding both an air and a water barrier on top of that is this Prosigo R guard system. You've seen me do some videos on this on residential, but it's all over the commercial world. And really that's where it came from. I've kind of uh, encouraged residential builders to steal that detail because this acts like a rubberized, kind of like a bed liner on the outside of that building. And you can see as it goes on, it forms a continuous membrane. So we really like that. But back to the point we were making earlier that steel studs are highly conductive so that even if I use my rock wool bats in here, I'm still going to have a pretty big disadvantage for all that thermal transfer. They call that thermal bridging at each one of these studs, which is going to negate the high R value of the cavity such that the wall assembly's overall rating is less than half what the assembly rating would be if it was just the bats. Now, the Masonry Veneer Association has a really interesting article on this because apparently it was pretty common uh, in the 80s and 90s to actually build residential houses with this type of construction. And in fact, there was a study done by the Canadian Mortgage Housing Association, which my northern friends probably know all about. American builders don't know much about them. But they did a really interesting study, and I'll link to that in the description below, that the Masonry Advisory Council did a summary on as they were talking about this type of construction. And they said this study was houses that were residential houses built with this type of construction, two by six depth rather than two by four depth like my mock-up shows. And they said the study was done over a seven year period with this type of construction and they monitored the inside of the wall cavities with thermocouples, relative humidity sensors, moisture sensors, and pressure taps. And then four years after they started the study, they opened up the wall to see how it was performing. And they said the results are startling. Building paper on the outside. Now they weren't using uh, this Prosigo Argard. They were using building paper. Building paper and exterior gypsum board were very wet with significant amounts of mildew, minor corrosion of the building frame, and fiberglass bat insulation that was very wet. Now here's the deal, here's the reason. It's not just an energy transfer that we're worried about when we use this. We have a risk of condensation and that's what was happening on those Canadian houses that were built with this type of construction. It was real cold outside, that cold was transferring through and the inside metal, just like you saw my hand earlier getting hot, the inside metal here was really cold. 
And a cold surface can be a condensation risk, especially in a cold climate in the winter. We have breathing, we have cooking, we have showering, we have humidity inside our houses. And if any of that air leaks into this wall cavity, it's really easy to find a cold condensing surface if this was your construction type. The same can be true with wood construction, but because wood is an insulator and has an R value, like I said earlier, of about R1 per inch, that there's a little bit less of a reduction in that risk. Not totally though, but that's where this comes in that I wanted to talk about specifically here. And this is how we mitigate the risk of that condensation and all that BTU transfer by thinking about exterior insulation. Now, if you saw my, uh, my house, my videos that I've made a lot, I've used a lot of this product. This is called Rockwool. Rockwool is a mineral wool insulation, and they make it for both cavities, like you see that R15 bath that's made for the interior of a two by four wall, but they make this product called Comfort Board. It's an exterior insulation. It'd be akin to putting a sweater on in the wintertime rather than stuffing insulation in between your ribs. You get more benefit from putting a sweater on the outside if it's cold outside than you do trying to stuff insulation in between your ribs. And that's what this comfort bat is gonna do to our wall assemblies on both wood framing and especially in steel framing. And these days with codes changing almost everywhere in North America, when you see these steel studs on exterior uh, commercial buildings, you're going to see some type of exterior insulation, uh, and you're also seeing a lot of rock wool that's getting uh, high adoption rates in the States. However, there is a bit of a trick to this because now when I fasten this to either my metal studs or my wood studs, I need to think about that process because I'm, I'm going to have to anchor whatever cladding is on the outside. Now you've seen me do a lot of rain screens where I've got some type of batten that I'm screwing on and screwing through into the studs, but it's very typical in commercial buildings and certainly residential buildings to have masonry on the outside, to have brick, to have stone, rock, whatever masonry on the outside. And Prosego sells this really cool product. This is called the Thermal Grip MVA, Masonry Veneer Anchor. It's gonna come in two pieces to your job site. This piece right here is gonna have a washer on it already, and you'll see that this washer has some tongs, some kind of grips on it, so it'll actually grip through into that insulation. And then this is actually the masonry anchor that is gonna go on this tie after it's been screwed in, and this is gonna go in the courses of masonry. So in between your brick layers where you're mortaring it on, that's gonna go in there. And what's cool about this is when we anchor this into a stud, whether it's a steel stud or a wood stud, this can actually vary in its location of where it's gonna sit in that mortar joint. Now these come in various sizes and they're what's commonly called a two-piece uh, tie where you've got this little piece right here, this little orange uh, anchor that's kind of arrow shaped is particularly cool because when this anchors in, and by the way, you're gonna get them in all kinds of sizes. I just have four or five of their sizes here on the table. You'll see that the shaft varies in length depending on the exterior insulation thickness. When this shaft penetrates into the gypsum sheathing on the outside, and especially when we've got this Prosco R-Guard sheathing on here, you're gonna see the tip of that shaft actually penetrate into the gypsum sheathing a little bit before it stops, and that's pushing against that fluid applied weather barrier that we talked about, that kind of rubberized coating in the outside of the building, which is gonna form a nice tight water and air gasket on the outside of this anchor. And what's cool about these is this is an all-in-one solution. The mason just screws these into each of the studs, drops that on, and we're done. One thing you do want to note, though, if you miss a stud, leave it in. That's really a big problem if you start screwing in holes and leaving those holes, because now we've got a place where water or air can get into that uh, cavity because we've made a hole in the gypsum. So if somehow you didn't mark those correctly and you find that this driller uh, tip right here is just spinning and is not didn't actually purchase, don't put another one in. Leave that one in and move on and put, put another one on. That's a really good tip here. Guys, I think we've uh, covered the most of it. I do want to end with some assembly values for you, which I think are really interesting here. By the way, Rockwool has 
uh, an effective R value chart on their website that you can put in a bunch of uh, assemblies. And of course I made a two by four mock-up, but let's just say this is a two by six mock-up, use your imagination. If this is a wood framed two by six wall, 16 inch on center studs, and we added that inch and a half of exterior mineral wool insulation, now we go from that comfort bat in the cavity, which would be R23, and roughly R6 on the outside for that exterior insulation, to an overall wall value of 22.7. That's huge, that's really, really good number. So that exterior blanket, that exterior sweater, makes a big difference for the building. Now check it out, the same thing, but let's say it's a two by six metal frame, steel stud building, if we use comfort bat inside the cavity, which is R24, but then we put an inch and a half of mineral wool on the outside, now the whole assembly R value is 14.4. In effect, we've doubled the R value from before when we only had cavity insulation. You saw that, at, I think it was 7.1 uh, on that chart before. Now we've gone up to 14.4. So only an inch and a half of the exterior insulation. We've doubled the overall R value of the assembly. And that's a really big deal. Guys, lots more information about these masonry anchors in particular on the ProSco website. Everything we talked about today with products, I'll put a link in the description below. But if you're a builder out there thinking about steel studs versus metal studs, think carefully about the assemblies. Make sure that you're choosing an assembly that's gonna be low risk and make sure you're also meeting your codes for wherever you're building locally because I suspect almost everywhere you're building in North America, if you're building with steel, you're gonna need some exterior insulation. And almost everywhere in the States these days too, except for maybe a few places in climate zone one, two, or three, is requiring exterior insulation as well. If you're not currently a subscriber, guys, hit that subscribe button below. You know we've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on TikTok or Instagram, otherwise we'll see you next time. Oh! Build show.